Bob, how are you? Hey, David, how you doing? Good. You ready for some advanced training? You bet. Great. I was talking to a crew member, and he told me you had uh, taught Lassie a new gag? Yeah, it's my favorite trick. Lassie, give me a big yawn. A big yawn. That's a boy. Oh, that That's is, a good That boy. is amazing. You know, since we did the grammar school commands, a few people have talked to me. They always heard that training hurt the personality of a dog. Is that right? Not at all, not at all. Because actually, we start with Lassie as a puppy. We build their personality. We play with them. We take them a lot of places. It makes them very outgoing. Mm -hmm. Now, what about life expectancy? From what I understand, your dogs live far past the norm. I have a theory on that. I think it's because we do treat them and take them places and treat them well that they want to. They never want to die, you know? Mm -hmm. The first Lassie lived to be, I think, 18. Wow. And we had a mutt dog. We think he was around 27. 27? 27 years and of age. And the normal is what, about 12? Well, for big dogs, 12, 14, that's a good life. Anything over is great. And little dogs, you can probably get a little more time with them, you know, 18, maybe 17. Wow. All right, well, since your, your method is based on foundation, while we walk over to the training area, let's, let's recap the grammar school commands that we've learned so far. All right, Lassie, come on. Come on, jump. Come on. Come on, jump. Now let's summarize the beginning commands. First, while putting the collar on, make sure to use a slip chain while training. And remember to put the slip chain on properly. If it is on correctly, it will release after you tug on it. It is also important to use a food reward when putting the slip chain on your dog. This will associate the slip chain with a pleasurable experience and also help you avoid playing tug of war with your dog. It is also helpful to use your hand for control while putting the slip chain on. This will help prevent getting the slip chain caught in the dog's mouth. When you're teaching your dog to come, make sure to use a long leash to give yourself some distance between you and your dog. After your dog gets distracted, call his name while gently tugging on the leash. Also, make sure to have a visible reward. This will entice him to come towards you. Make sure to use a warm tone, as with all the commands, and kneel down to your dog's eye level. When you are teaching your dog to walk at your side, make sure to hold your leash short in order to give yourself more control. Also, while teaching your dog this command, have food in your opposite hand to entice him to walk with you. And remember, as with all the commands, don't ask for too much too soon. Go in small steps. In teaching your dog to sit, Hold your leash short to give yourself more control. While saying sit, pull up on the leash with one hand while the other hand gently pushes the dog down on the behind. This will reinforce the command since you are once again using verbal and hand cues. Also, as with all the other commands, make sure to reward the dog quickly and in the finished position so the dog knows what he is being rewarded for. Since this is foundation training, start your dog in the sitting position. Hold the leash close and gently pull down toward the ground while saying down. If your dog resists, delicately pull his legs forward and lie him down on the ground. And remember, make sure to reward him in the finished position. First, make sure to keep the distance minimal between you and your dog. Remember, the closer you are to your dog, the more control you have. Second, as with all the other commands, remember the importance of verbal and hand cues. By using both, you will be reinforcing the command to your dog. And finally, if the command is not performed correctly, return your dog to the original position. This way, your dog will know when he has performed the command incorrectly. Bob, we've gone through all the grammar school commands. Now we're on to high school. What do we learn next? Well, I want to show you a little trick I like because it, it makes Lassie appear very smart. It is kind of a smart trick. Okay. And it's, it's where I make him turn to his right and his left. Lassie, on your feet. Here's what the finished product looks like. Turn to your right. Come here. All right, Lassie, come on. Turn to your left. Now, how we achieve that is, come on, come here. I will show him a little piece of food and holding the leash quite closely. Mm -hmm. I just maneuver him around and I feed him. And I say, turn to your right. Then I can do the same thing, turn to your left. left. So you're actually leading Lassie around with the food. He's following the food while you're saying, turn to your right or turn to your left. That's right. All right, turn to your right, turn. All right, that's good. And I reward him and then I'll do the same thing the other way here. Turn to your left. That's a boy.
Yeah. And you're holding the leash close for good control. That's right. So pretty soon after I get him where he's doing this meat, he'll go around. Turn to your right. Now I can start to put a little distance on that. Mm -hmm. All right, back up. This back. is another reason to use a, a longer leash. That's right, particularly for this one, because you'll see how I work this. Turn to your right. And I turn to your left. See, I can take it. And actually, if he was to stay there, which he knows the trick, so he's anticipating it. Mm -hmm. But I wrap that around. Now, I'll say, turn to your right. And this helps him come around. So if the dog isn't doing the trick, you can actually help him go around because That's right. the leash is already That's around right. Him. It gives you the distance that you need. So what you end up with is a dog off a leash, and you tell your friends, my dog knows his right from his left. Turn to your right. Lassie, turn to your left. And they say, why, well, he knows his right and his left. It would seem to me also in movies and television, this is very important because a dog, like an actor, has to turn towards, turns towards the camera. camera. If they would mount camera over here, I always want Lassie to play the camera as he runs off. So I'd say, go on. You see, and then somebody would call him and he'd continue. So what's next? Well, the next thing would be crawl. What we do here is we've, we've taught him to lie down, which is the first part of that. So now, holding the leash short again, we take the food and we can entice them a little bit to come forward. Down and forward, we start them with, we, we use the food to kind of bait them in. All right, crawl, crawl, crawl. And that's as much as you want. If you can get that, that was good. That was good, you see. So it's, it's the hand motion of crawl, or the verbal cue of crawl, the hand motion of just uh, with the food, and he's following the food. That's right. Easy, down. You say down because that reinforces that he's down if he starts to get up. And you pull forward, crawl. Mm -hmm. Crawl, saying the word down, crawl, down, you're crawl. You're just gently tugging on the leash. That's right. And I'm only asking for little steps at a time. And maybe I'll only do this three times a day. If I can get him to do this a couple of feet mm -hmm. that day, I'm happy. You know, I'm not going to try for a long thing. On your feet. Back up, back, 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 back up. So what we end up with is sit, lie down. All right, Lassie, crawl, crawl, crawl. Now, what's the difference with the hand cues between sit, lie down, and crawl? Because they're all very similar. At this point, I do have to start using voice because when you get into that many commands that are that similar, you need to use a little voice sometimes, unless you pre-rehearsed them. And then he knows that he's only going to do that one thing. We've talked about foundation training the whole way through. Sit turned into lie down, lie down into crawl. What does crawl turn into? What I like to do next is I like to tell them to uh, teach them to lie on their sides. Mm -hmm. So what I do with this, and sometimes you'll, you'll get a little resistance from your dog because this kind of puts them at a disadvantage. So they don't, so you take and you just push them over and say stay. This is where stay comes in. So they don't come back up. They know what they've done. Now reward them in this position. Always rewarding in the finished position. That's right. And then we can bring them back up. Come on up, Lassie. Come on. And I even reward them for that because that can become a command too. Mm -hmm. So is that why you separate the verbal commands with sit, stay, lie down, stay, and now crawl, stay? Right. And then on your side, on your side, you, stay. You have it. So what we have here is I have, get on your side, and I can have them come back up. Come on up, Lassie. Stay mm -hmm. on your side. Now, since dogs are at a disadvantage, since you're above them, and obviously you kind of lean down to them, and they get kind of playful and feisty, does it make it more difficult? Well, it does. But if you've, see, that's where your foundation comes in. You've already taught this dog about five things. So that, a little of that is gone now because he knows, he understands training at this point. Mm -hmm. He should understand training at this point. Uh, you know, you, you've taught a couple of those tricks, and you've accomplished three and four, and this is going to be about six. So at that point, he should know something about learning. I wouldn't want to start with this. Right. That's why we move in a certain order. So training is like school, and the dog needs to know that during school it's time to listen, to pay attention, and not to uh, just mess around. That's right. And at this point, the more tricks you put on them, the more they learn that, and the less problems you have with any of that. Mm -hmm. So we have them over now. Now we can go to another one that uh, you might recognize. Here, dig it up. Dig it up. Dig it up. Come on, dig it up. Dig it up. Dig it up. Come on, dig it up. Dig it up. Dig it up. Now, so dig it up, I do remember, from, uh, from an old movie. That's right. Maybe from 1943, That's last right. you come home? That's right. We get into sit, lie down, crawl. Come on, crawl. Down, crawl, crawl, crawl. On your side, on your side. All right, come on, dig it up. Come on, dig it up. Come on, dig it up. Dig it up, 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 dig it up. Dig it up. That's a boy's thing. So now, this is, uh, this is the majority of the scene, the oh famous God. scene from Lassie Come Home, that really earned Lassie the, the title role, except your dad added a few more amazing, uh, That's right. amazing well, tricks. Well, let's take, a, let's take a look at the scene, and if you'd be so kind, talk us through it, 
and you can show us exactly what your dad did. I'd love to. Well, actually, that's Pal. He's doubling their lassie, you know, that had to part. And this is my father's big chance to try to win this role. And I think he had this, uh, he had this all planned, you know, how he's going to do this. He makes the dog come up really easy. And I mean, this is incredible in he the hasn't sense that a dog likes to get out of water. They don't wait. That's hesitate. right. That's right. Now he's got him hesitating. He'll even make him stay. My father's timing is real good, too. And he's feeling about how a tired dog that just swam that far would be. And it's through voice inflection that, right. that your father's giving him these directions, the it's, hesitation. It's stay easy. Put your head down. Easy. Right there. And like, like that, that little wobble almost. That's right. Makes you think the dog is exhausted. And now he'll have him lie down real soon. Lie down. And yes, he put his head down because a tired dog puts his head down. It's amazing the subtleties in a scene like that. It is, you know. I was so lucky working uh, 330 episodes of my father as his assistant. The things I learned, you know, it's, uh, it's great. He was a great dog trainer. Now let's summarize the important points in the past three commands. In teaching your dog to turn to his right and turn to his left, start by holding the leash short for control. Then, as you gently pull him around in a circle, have food in your opposite hand so the dog is essentially following the food. As you pull your dog around, say, turn to your right, and give the dog his food reward upon completing the circle. Do the same when teaching your dog to turn to his left. Finally, use a long leash for this command, since once your dog gets the hang of it, you can build distance by wrapping the leash around your dog and having him perform the command. Remember, crawl is based on the command sit and lie down, so start with your dog lying down and make sure to hold your leash short for control. Then repeat the phrase, down, crawl, while holding the food just in front of your dog, so he'll crawl forward for the food. Your dog's instinct will be to raise up, so make sure to keep the leash short and reward your dog at ground level so he stays low. And finally, don't ask for too much too soon. A few feet at the beginning is worth a lot of verbal and physical praise. Once your dog has learned to crawl, you then can teach him to get on his side. You first gently push your dog over, saying on your side. Once the dog is in the position, make sure to say stay, so your dog knows not to get up. Also, since being on his side can be an intimidating position for your dog, be sure to reassure him verbally while saying the command on your side, and make sure to reward him in the finished position. Bob, food and nutrition are very important. Let's start with food. What should people look for and what should they stay away from? Well, you know, dogs are different. You know, puppies need a different food because they need maybe more protein in their diet. And your older dogs, you shouldn't feed them something that's really a, a real high protein food because they're not getting the exercise anymore. Mm -hmm. And depending on how much exercise a dog has. And you know, if you're confused with it, I'd ask the vets because they seem to know what your dog, if he's overweight or cut his food down to a different a different, different portion of different food. Mm -hmm. Now, Mel and Lassie are the same age. They're both, you know, a, a few years old. Do they get the same thing because they're the same age, even though they're very different in size? Well, you know, the proportions are different. But the food's the same with them because they're both the same age and they're both very active dogs. Mm -hmm. And I have a large yard where they play, so. All right, so we've talked about food, which means a balanced diet. What about exercise? How important is exercise for your dog? I'll tell you about that. My dogs that live the longest are my most active dogs. They're naturally very active. And my dogs that have not had the lifespan have been the ones that were more or less lazy. So I think that goes for people or anything. The more exercise we get, the better life we're going to have. That's right, because the lassies have lived far beyond the, the norm. That's right. These dogs, a lot of them were active on their own. You didn't have to work them or do anything with them or play with them because they just like to run. But with the lassies, all of those have had long lifespans because of so many run-throughs and swimming across the rivers and all of this. You know, they've been like athletes. All right, Bob, let's look back now at one of your favorite episodes and see how a few of these advanced commands were utilized. I'd love to. Now this is amazing because oh. there's not only a catch, but there's a master shot with this stallion and last time. Now that's back up, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. There's more back up and speak, speak at the same time. Right. Right. 
here's the sensitivity of Lassie gingerly moving forward. Right. And then, this is great. This is acting. This is, and now he's going to imitate the horses rare and the bark. And the, I think this is a little bonding thing here. Now, is, I mean, is this what you what you were talking about about the difference between doing tricks and acting? I mean, act, That's Lassie right. actually has some trepidation here moving That's forward. That's right. That's right. He's trying to make friends with his horse. He's trying to. He's, He's imitating what he does, and he's doing it very delicately because he's not sure. He's unsure, and the horse is unsure. And now, how does how does your dad, and how do you now get that out of a dog? Well, I'll tell you, this guy with the horse is pretty good too. <laughs> uh, well, we just it's it's like back up and it's come forward, it's stop, it's speak, it's stay. Now back up, now easy, come forward. Now most dogs here though would be heading for the hills. Well, it's, we got him used to this before. They'd seen each other before, you know. This is acting on their part. Now he's trying to beckon the horse to follow. That's Lassie's. It's a great scene. Right. Come on, follow me, and he's going away. Bob, your family history is amazing. Uh, 50 years of Lassie, the Weatherwax name is synonymous with that, obviously, but started with your dad, now you're the main trainer, and your son is in the business as well. Heck, your grandfather was an animal trainer as well. That's true. But when you were a kid, you were the kid everybody else wanted to be. I mean, your dog was Lassie. Everybody wanted to be, but I didn't understand it, you know. I thought everybody had Lassie or a dog like Lassie, and I thought everybody's dog was in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest misconception of Lassie, would you say? Oh, the biggest misconception is that we have like uh, 10 Lassies, uh, Lassie for each, each trick. Mm -hmm. And what you'd have there is 10 uneducated dogs. And that goes back to our theories, the more you build, the more educated. So basically, Lassie does 95% of all of his work. And maybe we have a, a double dog run over the mountain at a distance to save his energy. Mm -hmm. what, what is your, let's say, best childhood memory? Well, my best. My best childhood memory is not necessarily my father's best childhood memory. <laughs> and what uh, is that? I got up early one morning and I was a little bored. And my father just finished Lassie Come Home and they're getting ready to shoot the second Lassie movie. And I took the scissors and cut this dark stuff off oh, here. No. Well, they had to get hair pieces, you know. And my father says, fortunately, you only cut that. You didn't touch his tail. I says, well, I didn't know where it ended and I didn't want to cut. <laughs> How old were you? Oh, about six. It was, it was a good story for me because he didn't kill me. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> that is great. Let's go back and train some more. So, Bob, what are a couple of other tricks that people like to show their guests? Well, the favorite, as most people like to show, is, is uh, Lassie uh, putting his foot up, or your dog putting his foot up. Mm -hmm. Like that. Shaking hands, they call it. I say, put your foot up. And how I teach this with a big dog, it's pretty easy because, again, keeping your leash short, you pull up and push him over. Mm -hmm. All right, put your foot down a minute <laughs> so I can show this. He knows by it pushing so well, him he's over, you see, the foot huh? will come up. You see it come up because it's catching his balance. Uh -huh. So you're really pushing the dog off balance a little bit. A little bit off balance. Does that scare the dog at all? No, it just pushes him over a little bit. I just do it enough to get his foot up. And then to really help reward, I put the food right there. So it's a finished place. His paw is right here, and he finishes getting his reward. So you're rewarding Lassie in the finished position so he knows exactly what he's being rewarded for. Right, he knows exactly that he's done it right. Put your foot up. This may be a foolish question, but are dogs left and right handed like people are and does it make a difference on which paw you want him to hold up? Well, it does in a sense. You can teach him either one. This dog is left handed. He prefers to lay on his left side the whole shot, but I taught him with the right foot. But, you know, he, see him pushing, no, over here, no, the other one, the other one, see that, see him push over, see mm -hmm. that foot come up, off the pushing over. Can most people teach both paws, or should they just concentrate with the one their, their pet feels comfortable with? You know, you can teach both. I normally only teach one, but you can teach them both, because it's just, once he learns that, then go into the other, and just, he'll learn. It's easy, because he knows if you push that way, you push the other, it'll, it'll gel with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, verbal cue. It, can a person use any verbal cue, and how long, how short should it be? Well, the thing is, dogs understand sharp things, such as put your foot up uh, quickly or this or that. It, it's a nice long sentence, but it's mainly foot. It's one cue that will start it, foot. You know? Lassie, put your foot up nicely. <laughs> Still the foot. And they know it just from that one command. That's right, or paw, whatever you want. All right, well, let's give Lassie a break, and we're going to do a couple of small dog commands with uh, none other than uh, your favorite little dog, Mr. Mel. Mel. All right, go on, Lassie. All right, let's get Mel in here. Mel, come here, boy. Little guy like you. We'll go back to the leash because that's the way we should do these things. Okay. 
Now, Mel obviously isn't quite as well trained as Lassie, but, uh, but he knows his, his grammar school commands and some advanced uh, training as well. He does a few little things. I'll show you. Let's see over here. Come here, Mel. He's very cute when he crawls. Mel, lie down. Down. Crawl. 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 Okay, now, my first question is his back feet. It's hilarious, but is, is that his own tendency, or did you teach that? That's the way he likes to do it. See, and I allow him to do that because it's cute, you know. Mm -hmm. you, if I pulled him a little quicker, he would stop doing that, but I like that. So when people are training their dogs, and their dog may do something a little bit different just because that's the dog's personality, should they let that go? Sure. I, well, in my case, yes. But I think, you know, that's up to them. It's an individual thing. If they like the way their dog does it, they can do that. Mm -hmm. But with us, I do that because I'm in the motion pictures, and I think that's a great-looking way to crawl, you know, <laughs> for entertainment reasons. Absolutely. Bob, what are some of the small dog tricks you do with Mel? Well, I do uh, roll over with Mel. It's an advanced trick, and I don't recommend it for big dogs because it can be, it can hurt their uh, back. But I'll tell you, it's really cute with a little dog. Mel, come here. Crawl. Come on, crawl. All right, Mel, roll over. Roll over. That's now, now, why does that hurt a, a bigger dog's back? Well, it's kind of, you know, an 85-pound dog like Lassie, they can wrench their back because they have to throw their feet to push them over, and they're a longer body dog mm -hmm. where these are little guys and they can do these certain tricks they can do like to jump through the arms needless to say last he's never going to jump through my arms like he does right now so if anybody out there is is afraid that it might hurt their dog definitely check with their vet first that's right that's right i just don't recommend it for large dogs we used to teach it to larger dogs but we stopped doing it because we feel that it could could mm -hmm. be a problem all right now roll over is really um, a continuation of a couple of the other tricks that's right first you have to teach lie down mm -hmm. and then i teach on their side and then after I teach on the side, I'll take the rope, put it under the feet, and flip it over. But it's really not for the person that just wants to train their dog at home for right. obedience. Okay, roll over, step by step. How do you teach it? All right, first we have to teach slide down. Lie down, Mel. So that's so then on your side, Mel's getting ahead of me, so I taught him on his side. Now I'll just flip him over. Roll over. Roll over. All right, that's the voice. And you bring him out of it, and that lets him know he's done a complete thing. Will a dog fight that command? I mean, since they're so low to the ground, are they intimidated at all? Well, they do. Matter of fact, your worst part of this will be, come here, come on, Mel, lie down, is on your side, on your side. This is the part they usually fight. Mm -hmm. They don't like that part. And you see how I did that? It was pushing him over again. Mm -hmm. Now, when he's there, I make sure to feed him in that position. And I can actually take this rope. All right, roll over, see. And, and that flipped his leg over. Yeah. Right. And it's very important to remember, everything is very gentle. All the nudges, all the pushes. It's all nothing, nothing to scare the dog, but all gentle pushes. And it's all little steps leading up to this. You know, you're seeing something finished, and it's not going to be quite that easy for you. But once you've accomplished making him lie down, you know, he lies down, he stays, he'll start to be easier on these. You know, he'll pick it up. When you're teaching a trick like this, do you ever, at the beginning, do you ever get down low with the dog so they don't... I did, sure, I had to because he's little. Or, you know, I put him up on a table, too, and brought him up to my height. Sometimes, for some people, they don't want to bend over. Maybe they're, they're elderly, or, mm -hmm. and they don't want to do that. So you can put him up on the table. But lie down on your side. Stay. And then I reward him on that position. Mm -hmm. And then roll over. So the hand cue for roll over is similar. It's, it's lie down is halfway, and then roll over is the right. completed circle. Slide down on your side, then roll over. And he's doing it just <laughs> yeah, from the hand cue. Yeah. OK, Bob, so what's the next command? Well, I like to teach dogs to back up. And the reason I do that is so that they're not pushing so close to you when you're trying to instruct them, like to put your foot up and certain things. So uh, how we do that is normally what I'll do is I'll do it against the wall of my house, but we don't have a wall here. Mm -hmm. So the reason I do it against the wall is it, it keeps their direction straight. So they can't right wander there, everywhere. Yeah, they're not going all over. And with him, he's already had the lessons, so he knows about straight. Mm -hmm. So we'll just pretend there's a wall there. Okay. On your feet now. On your feet. And I just nudge him up on his feet. All right, back up, back, 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 back up, back up. That way I have him at a distance mm -hmm. so that I can work on him and he's not right here. All right, come on now. Also, it would seem another good reason to, to have your dog back up is when you have guests over, they're not always climbing on your, on your friends. That's right, that's right. That also teaches them. You can use that cue if they start to put their feet up or bother people, you say back up and they'll, they'll back, back away from it. Bob, explain exactly how you do back up. Well, on this trick, I wouldn't have any food in my hand. I'd have it in my pouch because I don't want him to come towards me. What we do is, is, you, is you run your feet towards him. Back up, back, 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 you see? Back. See me take my, my feet towards him? Mm -hmm. And then when he reaches the spot you want, 
you give them a little biscuit for that. All right, now besides back up, um, there's another trick that you do also against the wall, which is one of Mel's favorites, jump through your arms. Yeah, that we saw that earlier. Mel, come on, come on, jump. Now how I do that mm -hmm. is it's the same thing, we'll pretend the wall's up here. Okay. I take him and I put my arm up against the wall so okay. he has no direction other than he has to go this way. And it's, it's a low thing again. All right, come on, Mel, come on, come on, jump. Atta so boy. you start off small, just like everything right. else. Low. First it's low. I mean, you can have it almost to where it's against the wall, so he has no option. Mm -hmm. Now it could be down to here. Come on, come on, jump. See, it can almost be a walkover. All right, come on, jump. And so, then, yeah. So you have the wall on one side, so he really can't go anywhere. That's right. He's restricted between me and the wall. He has to jump that way. And then, then I start to bring my arm up to get a little more height. Uh -huh. Come here, Mel. Come on, jump. Now what we can do is start to move away from the wall and then close our arms in. Uh -huh. This way, this... This gives him that petition that the wall was. Mm -hmm. All right, Melvin, come on, come on, jump. And if it fails and he, he stops doing it, then we go back to we go back a couple of steps, back to this again, or just back to the wall with your arms like that. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, he's just following the verbal cue, which is jump, and he knows exactly what to do. That's right. And then we move away from the wall. All right, come on, jump, jump. Now, is this the same way you teach Lassie to jump over your back? Exactly, because I get right up against the wall. And uh, with that, I use a little help. I have somebody else give him the pull over my back. Mm -hmm. And then he goes over my back. And then pretty soon, when he's doing that quite well, I'll start to move away from the wall. Mm -hmm. Same thing. If he fails, goes between me and the wall, gets back to the wall again. All right. Let's summarize the key points in the past few commands. First, in teaching your dog to put your foot up, hold your leash short for control and gently push your dog off balance he will instinctively lift his foot up. Then catch his paw with your opposite hand, making sure you put the training treat in this hand and reward your dog immediately. This will help your dog to understand exactly what he is being rewarded for. Remember, rollover should only be taught to small dogs since bigger dogs can injure themselves. Start the command with your dog in the lying down position. Then put him on his side. After that, wrap the leash around the front paw and turn your dog over, saying, roll over. Upon finishing, praise your dog so he knows he has completed the command. Also, make sure to stay low with your dog so he is not intimidated. When teaching back up, start against a wall, or if you're inside, try between a couch and a coffee table, so your dog has to go straight back. Begin by walking towards your dog while saying back up and using the hand cue. Also, don't have food in hand. Keep it in your pouch and reward your dog when he has performed the command. When teaching jump through the arms, once again, start against a wall and begin with your arm low to the ground so it's almost a walkover for your dog. Hold the leash short and gently tug on it, saying jump, rewarding the dog upon completion. Once your dog has learned the command, start to move away from the wall and close your arms. And closing the circle will give your dog a partition, just like the wall did. If your dog begins to disobey, go back to the wall and build your dog's confidence. All right, Bob, a very special Lassie was Lassie number five, affectionately called Hey Hey. Let's look back now at an amazing sequence. All right. As we open up here in the shop, my father's actually upstage. And you'll see Lassie glance at him to get ready for the cueing. We'd already taught him to jump to the table and into my arms, but what we decided to do with this trick is include the horse in between. And he can't see you when no. he's starting out to jump? No, he can't. All he can see is the side of that horse, and he does not hesitate. You'll notice that he goes on a direct drive. There's no hesitation. So that when he springs, he has no time to see if I'm there or not. He has to just take it for granted that I will be there, and I will catch him. Bob, on the subject of health, I know this is one of your biggest concerns. We've talked about it for a long time, leaving dogs in cars, and it happens all too often. You bet. It's a terrifying thing. You know, you leave a dog unattended in a car, and I think it's like 15, 20 minutes on a hot day, and you've lost your dog. And is, is that fast? It's that quick. Now, I've read thousands of dogs a year die like this, and every time I go to the grocery store, I, I seem to see a dog in a car. I mean, there's really no safe time, even with the windows down. 
No, you can't because you're not going to find shade in a parking lot. And, you know, unless you have somebody stay in there, like with last, I'll have somebody attend the car. I don't leave it unattended. Mm -hmm. And they'll uh, sit there with them, keep the air conditioner on, make sure it's in the shade. But most people can't do this. I just recommend don't take them with you if you can't if, in that situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, even when you drive, you've darkened the windows, and that's in consideration of the dogs. Right. That's just so when I drive, it keeps it fairly cool, mm -hmm. you know. But to leave it, it wouldn't work for just leaving them in there. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that in every aspect of life, you really have to consider the dogs. That's right. They can't talk for themselves. We have to think for them. We've talked about the fact that dogs are a lot like kids in many ways. Also, the more they learn, the smarter they get, and the more they try and get away with. That's right. Plus, you know, they're smart and they use all these things to their advantage. I've taught Lassie to open doors. He opens doors. <laughs> I have to put a special latch on the door so they can't do this, kind of like having little children. Now, what about the refrigerator? You told me once they kind of broke in and had some fun. Sure, he's learned how to manipulate that with his nose. He pushes that, it opens, he gets into that. Right. <laughs> we don't want him in the refrigerator, so we have to put a little special lock on that, too. Now, on the set, the difference between action and cut, he knows the difference, doesn't he? They learn all that. They. He learns cut. I used to, you know, when I started, they learn action. They want to jump the shot, so I have to correct him on that. And then he learns cut. Uh, we were shooting a shot one time in the kitchen, and uh, he'd done a, a good deed earlier in the show, so they were rewarding him, the family, with a bunch of raw meat, you know, a big pound of ground round. So he likes that. But normally he's a very delicate eater. Mm -hmm. So he's delicately eating this food during the take, and uh, then we yelled cut. With that, he knew I was going to go in and reach and grab that food. So with that, he just took the whole thing and gulped it on down. I, th I thought his <laughs> eyes were going to bug out his head, you know. Bob, another very special dog, and also another very smart dog, was O.J. O.J., he was a great dog. I uh, got O.J. out of the animal shelter when he was about seven months of age. And uh, he was, I think, half sheep dog and half collie. Mm -hmm. So uh, I used to work him on live shows, which are, you know, live audience shows. They do them with three cameras, mm -hmm. and you can't talk like you can with film. and it's very hard to work, you rehearse and you have to do everything silent cues. Well, what I did with him is I'd put him in a shot, he'd go into the shot and he'd be in the master shot and then at certain points they might want him to perform like speak or something. So I'd have him, I'd have him bark, but the way I'd do that is I'd just shake the chain, that would draw his attention, I'd cue him to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't want him to continue looking at me because the people would be here, it wouldn't look right. It he wouldn't look natural. Right. So here comes the eye contact thing. So what I would do is I'd drop my eyes off of him. Mm -hmm. Well, with that, he would start to naturally react to the people moving. So pretty soon I started combining the eye contact with actually shifting my weight. And pretty soon I never had to take the eyes off, I'd just shift my weight. I'd have him speak, shake the chain, he'd speak. Then when he's finished, I would just shift my weight. He'd know, well, that's the end of that. And he'd turn around and be natural with the rest of the people. So yes. not only would he know the command, he would then learn from your eyes. And after that, just by body your body movement. motion, he would know what you would want him to do. Right. Now, obviously, this is great, and how smart they get, and, and opening the refrigerator and everything like that. But none of it can happen unless they know the foundation, the grammar school commands. That's right. That's what you do. You educate the dog, and it makes him smarter, makes him a better pet. A little mischievous sometimes, but a better pet. Great. Come on. Come on. Let's go up by the house, and I have a scene stage with Lassie, a little behind-the-scenes thing that will really show you how all this works. You know, I wanted to bring you here today, David, because we're doing a scene in here. It's, it's a little complicated. And you'll see some of these tricks I've taught Lassie actually working. Now, are these advanced commands and obviously some, some movie set commands? Yes, they are. Okay, yeah. now, this is the... Oh, this is cool. You only dressed half the set. That's right, because we're only using this part of it. What happens in this scene? Well, in this scene, we have Mel. He's under the table. Uh -huh. he's, he's waiting for Lassie in a desperate situation. They've been locked in this house. It's on fire. <laughs> Lassie's looked around, he can't find any way out. He goes over, he paws at this window. It opens, he turns to Mel, who's pretty scared, he's sitting over there frozen. He beckons to Mel, Mel doesn't want to come, he turns again and barks again. And finally Mel comes, he goes out the window, Mel goes out the window, and that's a cut. Now obviously this scene has a lot of urgency to it. How do you get that out of Lassie? Well, I get into the emotional stage myself, you know. I start to get my energy up because he's got to bark really excitedly. Come here, stay, speak, 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 speak. And he has to really paw quickly. And by, you know, transferring that energy, I can get him to do it. I mean, if the dog plays off of you, do dog trainers really become actors because they've got to transfer their energy, whether happy or sad, to the dog? That's right. We, it, we transfer the emotion. Plus, we actually designed the shot, how it would work. I know how Lassie would turn, how he would beckon the mm -hmm. Mel. And that's the difference between, you know, just doing tricks and being a motion picture dog trainer because you're making the dog act. Mm -hmm. 